your excellencies, honored guests, and friends for welcoming me here today. It is an honor, of course, to speak as a Liberal Democrat and our Foreign Affairs spokesperson, but more from my personal perspective as a British Palestinian. My mother comes from an old Greek Orthodox Jerusalem family. We are proud Jerusalemites and we are proud Palestinians. My grandfather, Wasif Jahariya, chronicled what life was like in Jerusalem from 1918 onwards in unique diaries that are now used by historians as source material. And in them, he told of a Jerusalem where Christians, Muslims, and Jews lived side by side in friendship and with respect. But those friendships were shattered through the Nakba. And like so many, we had to flee our beloved city. My grandfather George, Wasif's son, spoke of how when he was a boy, after the bombing of the King David Hotel, the family left Jerusalem to seek sanctuary in the Mount of Temptation in Jericho, and they lived there for six months. Before they left, he spent the last of his pocket money on a Palestinian flag to drape over the door so that when the Arab armies came to liberate them, they knew that that was a Palestinian house. They entered that monastery, expecting, of course, to soon return to Jerusalem. But as the harsh reality set in, and the Arab armies proved to be nothing but paper tigers, his words, they left the monastery as refugees. And he died a refugee in Athens, in Greece, having rebuilt his life from nothing, first in Jericho and then in Amman. Now, my family's experience is far from unique and far from the worst. The 15th of May marks 75 years since 750,000 Palestinians were driven out of their homes, just like us. And there are now some 6 million Palestinian refugees worldwide. My mother still describes the anguish she feels as a dis dispossessed Palestinian, and I share that anguish. And so I take it upon myself as the next generation to carry Palestine in my heart and promise to do everything I can to safeguard its future, a future that I fear is in great peril. Now, when the decision was made to partition Palestine in 1947, Wasif said, would we see Palestine particularly the fertile part, become the kingdom of Israel? Could Arabs and Muslims not react to this unjust decision? Without a doubt, we have been wronged. My great-grandfather's words still resonate in me 75 years later, because the Palestinians are still denied a just solution. Our cause is without question, quite simply, a demand for justice, that's all. Now, we cannot pretend that 1948 didn't happen, and no one is suggesting, unfortunately, that we can completely roll back the clock. There has been too much that has happened. Israel does have a right to exist. And so does Palestine. And we could start our search for justice by perhaps pointing out that the painful concessions that the Palestinian made in 67 have largely been ignored. But you just have to look at what's happening now and the dire human rights situation on the ground. Because the number of dispossessed grows daily as the far-right Netanyahu government holds up two fingers to the international community, daring them to challenge them on the grounds of international law and encourage even more illegal settlements in Palestinian territory. Illegal settlements that the UK continues to trade with. So with their mouths, they condemn them, and with their hands, they nourish them. What breathtaking hypocrisy. The UK trade with illegal settlements is shameful. It's corrosive, and it must stop. And it isn't just trade. All Palestinians have ever asked for 
is justice according to international law, nothing more and nothing less. The effective silence from the international community makes a mockery of those laws. The UK and our allies need to step up in a real effort to ensure the rights of all peoples, and that includes Palestinian right to self-determination, full political rights, and of course, the right of return. And that is why, every year that I've been elected, I have laid the Palestine Statehood Recognition Bill, because I want the government to remember what, their, what part they played, but also that that is the will of Parliament, who have also voted for that. And Palestine statehood may well be no panacea, but it would send a powerful signal that the UK stands with the Palestinian people. And above all, it would provide some hope to the cynical, the despondent, and the desperate. And on Monday, I will introduce the Nakba Commemoration Bill, which would compel the government to never erase history or forget the role that the UK played in it. Because far too quickly, our government seems to just forget. It was Britain who produced the 1917 Balfour Declaration. And one last quote, if I may, from my dear Wasif. He said, Britain helped to implement the UN decision. Alas, they considered this to be the final chapter in the story. But far from being the final chapter, it turned out to be the first in a very long book of woes for Palestinians. So today, I call on our government to start a new chapter, to urge them to begin that process of taking accountability for the part they played. And the government doesn't just owe it to Palestinians, but as self-declared guardians of the international rule-based order, I would argue it owes it to us all. It is time that this great wrong be made right, and only hope can punctuate the vicious cycle. So thank you all today in joining together in hope. Shukran.